So as Mike said, I'm going to focus mainly on memorialization of the Holocaust and the ways in which over time, since the Second World War, it's been used, abused and misused in, uh, around notions of anti-Semitism. Uh, and I'm going to refer a bit to the comparator that Mike mentioned. Uh, oops, sorry, I have problems in knowing how to move uh, down. Okay, uh, so mainly I'm going to focus on memorials and monuments, but not statues and discuss who's commemorated and raise issues about class, gender or sex and race, uh, as well as uh, just the general question of uh, Jews and anti-Semitism. Uh, Mike said quite a bit about my background as a Jewish socialist feminist. Uh, I'm going to focus in particular on the notion of the Holocaust or the Shoah in Hebrew. And it's the name given, as you all know, to the Nazi genocide or the alternative. And there's been quite a conflict over whether it's genocide or crimes against humanity. Uh, and especially the anti-Semitism initially in Germany between 1933 and 1945. Uh, the developments of the debate uh, really took place uh, between 35 and 50 years after 1945, uh, where until that point, there was a relative silence. But since that has been raised, it's become highly contested around notions of anti-Semitism. And whether uh, the Holocaust in particular is a uniquely Jewish uh, phenomenon, or linked with other forms of racism. And as Lucia in particular would say much more about, questions of memorials for other groups are relative, remain relatively mute, in particular for the Nakba uh, and uh, Palestinians today. And it's rarely raised with as much emotion as it is over Jewish people. So I think we need to uh, raise that question, as Mike has said, and I'll go through the, some of the ways in which this has happened over the last uh, 20 to 30 years. In, in particular, though, the Jewish approach of Yartzeit and Yiskor, lighting a yellow candle, is about memorials and memorialization, in particular about parents and others. And there are two events in particular that have been celebrated over the last uh, 50 years. First is Yom HaShoah, which was started to be celebrated as a Remembrance Day on April the 27th in Israel and uh, in relation to the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising. Holocaust Memorial Day, a much more contested day, uh, was, has been celebrated on January the 27th as the end of concentration camps and in particular the liberation of Auschwitz by the Soviet army and has been linked with Holocaust education and International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance. Uh, and in the UK recently there's become, been a debate about Holocaust Memorial Monument in Westminster Gardens and yet at the same time, all of these debates have occurred, there's been really in this country no acknowledgement of slavery until recently, or, an, or a memorial to the UK's imperial past, except for monuments uh, for particular individuals. Uh, and the only brief moment when this has become discussed is Sadiq Khan's recent offer of £500,000 for a memorial to slavery in Docklands. On the other hand, we've had lots of war memorials to uh, the people fighting in British wars, but mainly the senior uh, members. Uh, 
uh, developing my, sorry, I'm just uh, a, a brief personal introduction, most of which Mike has already said, but I just wanted to mention in addition to what Mike said, that my father arrived in the UK in late 1936. His elder brother uh, didn't arrive until mid-1939, but he was imprisoned in Dachau concentration camp after Kristallnacht, and he was only released with guarantors to the UK uh, in, late, in May, March 1939. And 30, 15 months later, uh, my father, his father, and, his, uh, and my father's elder brother were interned or imprisoned without trial from June 22nd, 1940, for up to nine months. And I think that question of intergenerational trauma, as how it might be thought about today, is something that is important for us to think about for new generations of refugees, for example, from Afghanistan, uh, Syria, Ukraine, and so on. And the whole debate about using Rwanda is also relevant. Uh, Mike's already mentioned the fact that I brought together uh, 11 other second generation stories in debating the zeitgeist. And equally, relevant here is that I resigned from the Labour Party in my uh, because my constituency Labour Party had a huge debate on Holocaust Memorial Day uh, 16 months ago and because it, it, the Holocaust Memorial Day was weaponized by a rabbi in my constituency who fought to prevent uh, a a feminist with a similar background from mine from speaking about women fighters in the Warsaw Ghetto. Uh, and also briefly, uh, I think we shouldn't forget that many of us are, are children of refugees. My mother was, uh, I'm second generation in the, no, my mother was second generation. She was the daughter of refugees from pogroms in in Russia. And I've only recently discovered that my grandfather was from her son in Ukraine and his wife was from uh, a place in Ukraine near Lviv, which uh, Philippe Sanz has written evocatively about the same area in his book. Uh, and to raise the question of Ukraine then, which I think is relevant because the poem Babi Yar, which was written by the Russian poet Yevtushenko in 1962, was about the fact that the Russians didn't build any memorials either, uh, apart from us uh, not building them. And his, his poem Babi Yar was about there being no memorials. Babi Yar was the ravine site in Kviv where 33,000 Jews were murdered by the Nazi in two day, Nazis in two days in 1941. And that emboldened Hitler to, escape, to uh, escalate to the final solution. For 25 years after the war, the Soviet Union didn't acknowledge Babi Yar. And in fact, uh, when Yevtushenko wrote his poem, uh, to protest against plans to build a sports stadium over the ravine site. And he, although not Jewish, his poem wanted to celebrate or to memorialize uh, Jewish blood that had been uh, uh, spilt in the uh, area. He wrote, over Babi Yar, there are no memorials. No Jewish blood runs among my blood, but I am as bitterly and hardly hated by every anti-Semite as if I were a Jew. By this, I am a Russian. Uh, he was admonished for writing this poem by uh, the Soviets, as was Shostakovich, who a year later 
set the poem to music as part of his choral 13th symphony, which was first performed in Moscow in December 1962. Uh, but the Soviets reprimanded both of them for being cosmopolitans. And cosmopolitan, as we know, has become uh, a code word or a trope, I guess. I don't know whether it's a trope or a code word for being a Jewish or sympathetic to Jews. This is the memorial, which I tried to paint uh, 15 months ago. Moving on from that then, Michal Friedman, who is a major uh, oligarch in this country, uh, was a major funder of this Holocaust Memorial project at Babi Yar. Uh, and uh, he, it was, the memorial was launched in 2016 uh, and now, Michal Friedman lives on Hampstead Lane, and this is a picture of the building house, house, mansion that he bought, uh, Athlone House on Hampstead Lane. And he was one of the Russian oligarchs whose assets were frozen a year ago or 15 months ago at the start of the war in Ukraine. So it, his involvement helps us to see how contested these notions are of anti-Semitism and uh, memorialization of certain historical events. Yad Vashem is the most famous Holocaust memorial, and it was established in Jerusalem in 1953 on Mount Herzl, or the Mount of Remembrance. But since its establishment, it's become hugely commercialized and is nothing like the original uh, memorial. Although the sculpture here uh, shows the dramatization of the horror of the Holocaust. Memo these memorials and monuments, or not statues, have developed a pace in the last 30 years, but mainly in the 21st century. Although I think Claude Lanzmann's film Shoah, uh, which is a six hour film of mainly male survivors of the Holocaust, perhaps launched the uh, debate and the story about the Holocaust. Since then, there have been many memorials, monuments, and museums in Germany, Austria, France, Italy, and Ukraine. And also the establishment of museums in the USA and the Imperial War Museum in London and a private gun museum in the UK, Beth Shalom, by a benefactor in Laxton near Nottingham. The Upsurge of debates was initiated internationally through an intergovernmental conference in January 2000, the Stockholm Forum on Holocaust Education, uh, Remembrance and Research. And uh, delegates from many governments committed their governments to the establishment of such memorial days. In the UK, it was Robin Cook, who was the Labour Foreign Secretary, who agreed to it. And the first Holocaust Memorial Day was a national ceremony in Westminster Hall, broadcast on television on the same date uh, in Germany, Italy, and Sweden. And it was the same day as the decision was taken by NATO countries to bomb Kosovo. So again, it shows how contested the, the nature of Holocaust Memorial is in terms of war and uh, commemoration. The Jewish Museum in Berlin was uh, opened uh, just over 20 years ago, designed by uh, the son of Holocaust survivors, Daniel Liebskind, uh, which in particular acknowledged the Holocaust with this 49 pillar uh, memorial. Uh, the memorial, memorial to the murdered Jews of Europe was opened on the 12th of May 2005 in Berlin 
uh, and that was an uh, undulating field of concrete stellies on the site of Hitler's bunker. And the cross street is now named Hannah Arendtstrasse in acknowledgement of her role as a political philosopher and debater, and she had lived in Berlin. Uh, in uh, 2012, there was an exhibition uh, uh, reporting uh, on the history of uh, the Holocaust uh, between propaganda and terror, uh, uh, illustrating the debates some 50 years earlier. In 2012, Berlin also es uh, excavated aspects of the old Jewish qu quarter uh, to illustrate uh, the history of Jews in Berlin. Similarly, around that time, or slightly earlier, there was a Frankfurt Memorial to the Holocaust made of stones from the Jewish graveyard er and erected in 1996. This is the city where my father was born and grew up. And this is another part of that same memorial, naming every Jew that they could on this wall find who was murdered in the Holocaust. So there are 21st century contestations about memorials, remembering and contextualizing this. And much of it's now contextualized in relation to Holocaust education. And all these international developments see anti-Semitism is separate from other racisms. There's an increasing focus on Holocaust Memorial Day and education in schools. Most education in schools focuses only on Holocaust Memorial Day. And it's also linked with the International Holocaust Remembrance Association and linking with Israel, Zionism and aspects of anti-Semitism. There are also, in parallel, individual developments in remembrance with the development of Stolpersteiner or stepping stones on the streets near where families used to live in Austria and Germany, especially. Uh, and finally, just one memorial which contradicts what I've been saying, which is a couple of statues of young children, which is the Kinder Transport Monument at Liverpool Street Station in London, which was a project established by the Association of Jewish Refugees in England, which pays tribute to those Britons, especially Nicholas Winton, who aided the rescue of 10,000 Jewish children, Kinder Transport as called, from the Nazi persecution, which led on to the Holocaust. So some conclu concluding thoughts for debate, which is from my point of view is why the British obsession with Holocaust Memorial Gay, given the role of the UK in the war and the lack of occupation of Britain by the Nazis. And the major recent issue with Holocaust Memorial in Westminster Gardens, which is to be designed, has been designed by an Israeli architect and remains a live issue. There's no similar debate about UK's racialized and imperial past. And there is no memorial for slavery, uh, for example, rather than to slave owners. And we know the debate last year about Colston as a slave owner who was toppled into the Bristol docks. Uh, and this is also by contrast with the numerous war, war memorials that we have. For example, the Cenotaph, which is of course nothing to do with anti-Semitism or the Holocaust, but just the memorial to those who fought, British people who fought in wars. And I think, Nira Yuval Davis's argument uh, with Mark Davis, she argued 20 years ago that uh, by contrast with Yom HaShoah or Ho Holocaust Memorial Day, why don't we have a national day against racism? No such debate 
has ever been started. Thank you.